Welcome back or welcome to the It Factory presented by Zayo. I'm your host, Yogi Roth, and today is a fun episode because we start here in LA, but then we punch up to Eugene, Oregon to sit down with Christian Gonzalez, a guy who I believe has a chance to be an all-American corner for Dan Lanning and Demetrius Martin and that Oregon football program. And what's unique about us, we punched up to Eugene. Well, he kind of punched over and up a little bit from Colorado, a transfer via the portal to Eugene, to this Oregon Ducks defense, along with, I referenced Demetrius Martin. He was his position coach at Colorado, his previous stop. And now he's thriving with the Ducks. So excited to sit down with him. I think his talent was evident from freshman year in this league or even back in high school, a really dynamic athlete. The bloodlines in his family are off the charts. When you just look at where he came from and how his competitive nature was cultivated. But then you watch him in a new environment. And he's not the loudest of guys, but his play speaks volumes. And you've watched him continue to grow as the season has gone on. We had a chance to sit down and catch up with one of the top players in this league. And I think one of the top corners in the entire country, Christian Gonzalez. Enjoy. Gosh, that's a great question. I don't know if I've ever been asked that. Like, what is the It Factory? The It Factory is back for season two. Last season, we explored what the It Factory is. Who has it and how they got it? This season, we still seek to answer the same questions, but with a new cast of characters. We take the helmet off some of the new faces in the Conference of Champions and some familiar faces as well. Players, coaches, and experts will explore what it is that sets them up for success on Saturdays. I'm Yogi Roth, and welcome back to The Effect. Are we are here in the Situation Room. Uh, I love taking this show on the road. Christian Gonzalez, as I referenced in the open, I'm with. Uh, number one, thanks for joining me, man. Sir, thank you for having me. Yes, of course, of course. Number two, tell me if this is true. I read that the first word you said in life was ball. Yeah, that's what my mom said. I mean, I don't remember, but I, mean, I think it makes sense being such an athletic family and always being around sports. So, yeah, I think that's true. I love that. So. Um, we have a little baby, and in Korean culture, my wife's Korean, you do something at their first birthday where you place um, a few objects in front of them, and whatever they pick, you know, legend would have it like that's going to be their, their future, right? So you put a ball, you put like a pencil, and you put like a stethoscope or something like that. So like are they a doctor, are they a writer or a lawyer, are they an athlete, and then like a microphone. And uh, our kid picked the microphone. Mm. So uh, who knows? Yeah. Who knows what will happen with our little two-year-old now? Um, but I think there's something unique about that of like your background, right? Your dad, 6'9", played semi-pro basketball in yeah. Columbia, right? Mm -hmm. uh, your sister is an Olympian. You know, the sister who's a track athlete and you have this beautiful little sister, mm -hmm. right? Um, you have this athletic family. What, what was your house like growing up? What do you remember? It's always competition. You know, it's like one day we'll, we'll be going to breakfast or something and my dad still thinks he's the fastest, so he'll like say, oh, I'm still the fastest, and everybody starts arguing, and he'll stop the car, and we would get out in, in a little parking lot and just race, and you know, everybody pushes each other, and it, it's a, it, was, it was so great being around them, growing up with those two older sisters that paved the way, and that just helped me a lot. Yeah, so tell me more about that. Like, everything was a competition. I, so you, would you be driving to like whatever restaurant, and the, the argument begins and you're like, okay, the minute we put the car in park, the, the set go and we're sprinting to yeah, inside the restaurant. It, was, it would usually be after dinner or after breakfast or if we were going somewhere, it would always be my dad that started it and we would all be like, no, nah, you're not fast anymore. And we would just, we would find a little, uh, like a park, a parking lot, get on a grass field and run like 40 yards. My mom would say go. It happened at least, I don't know how many times, almost every time we went somewhere. All right, so who would win? I would win. You would win yeah. every time? Yeah, most of the time. My, my sisters would beat me when I was younger, but once I got, started getting older, it was me. Oh, that's so good. I wanna I want show you something. And when you see this photo, like how old are you here? And what, what oh, yeah. comes to mind as you look at that? Ooh, I'm thinking I'm probably like, just turned 10 because my little sister was born, Lily. And 
it was, I don't remember much, but I know it was Christmas time because uh, I do remember this picture though. We had that little bench. It was outside usually, but we moved it inside. And this is when my grandma was here from Columbia. And because my little sister was just born, I just remember, yeah, that's how, that's how we were, always with each other, all four of us, just hanging out. Wow, you guys seem like it's such a tight family unit. How would you describe like how close you all are? We're super close. Like we've always been close, especially me and my older sister. We were we were super close when I was younger and Melissa, which is the oldest one. And then me and Sammy, we weren't as close growing up, but now I think as I matured, everybody is just like it's like super tight knit. Like I was just on the phone with them yesterday, just checking on them, just talking to them, and we all know like each other's goals, so we help push each other. But then most of the time, we're not even talking about that. We use each other to like escape our sports and just have fun with each other. Here, thanks, man. Um, so let's let's talk about that. Like you, you were the gifted athlete. It seemed like growing up in Texas. Was there a point where you're like? I know I'm good, or were you just always good because you were chasing your older sisters athletically? Yeah, that was something, yeah, that I went through that I knew I was, like once I started playing football and basketball, I could tell I was a better athlete just than most people. And then them being, watching them run at such a high level in high school, it was like I had to work up to them like to catch them, to not let my family down. So it was a little tough, a little challenging, but that helped a lot because I, I didn't want to let anybody down. Hey man, well, what's it like to, to feel that way? And when you say you didn't want to let anybody down, was it like you didn't want to let your family down, your sister, your mm -hmm. father, your mom? Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's, there's some pressure to it, but it's really not because at the end of the day, your parents are still going to love you and care for you no matter if that's not what you need to do. But for them, it was just like, what I always say is, my two older sisters, I watched them go through the recruiting process, get their scholarships, go on full scholarships. So for me, it was like, I can't be the first child to make my parents pay for college. So it was just something I had to work for every day. And then, yeah. What was it like when you got your first offer? What do you remember about that? Yeah, it was, it was from Colorado. Um, it was at like, I don't remember what day. It was like January something. It was in January after my junior season. And I had came home from a basketball game, like our high school game, went to go watch it. And it was like 1030 at night. And the coach called me and offered me. It was just like, it didn't really hit me till the next morning. Like I was excited in the time. But then the next morning it was like, nobody knew my name to just like, everything blew up. Wow. I feel like sometimes for the first athlete in a family that gets a scholarship or if, you know, your parents weren't elite athletes, like it's a new world and it's really hard. I just wrote a book all about like, hey, what's it like for a parent to manage this? What's it like for an athlete the first time they get an offer? But you saw it to your point. What did your dad do? What did your mom do when you look back on it now to, to allow you to manage that opportunity as the expectations would just continue to grow from there. Yeah, I think they just, they, they instilled from us from such a, a young age that it wasn't like we weren't the ones with all the glory. It's not us. It's God gave us the ability to do what we do and we got to give him the glory. So like, I don't think it really, I don't know if this is what you were asking, but like got to our heads or like it, it kind of just like, like a, a sigh of relief kind of like okay I did this but now I can go reach more mm, that's pretty unique so what is mom like like dad's six nine basketball player what was she uh, mom is is tiny five two <laughs> but you know she's she's the the talkative one of the of the family my dad's kind of like me I'm, I'm a lot like him really reserved until I get to know you a lot but she is super outgoing super friendly like always talking with people and just a great people person. So she's very easy to relate to and has a lot of friends and she's, she's always there for you. That's 
how I describe her is if you, even if you don't need something, it's just, she's, she's always checking. It's like, you know, moms, it's just, that's what they do. Still to come on the It Factory. On your social media, you use a hashtag evil twin. What is that? Yeah, it's just like, it's like this switch you gotta turn on and off. Like when, like we can be friends, like I have many friends I play in the Pac-12, like especially when I go to Colorado this year. Like you can be my friends all year, but as soon as we hit the field, it's like, I don't know you, like you gotta just play the game. Deep throw here, that's gonna be picked. Run back by Gonzalez. The first of his career. A dynamic athlete, got some ball skills, Ted. He's not just all coverage and all length, but he's a dynamic player. I think he's one of the top corners in the country. That's impressive. Looked like the receiver there, didn't he? Yeah. Is it different post game when you walk out to the parking lot, conversation with dad versus conversation with mom? Yeah. How so? I would say mom, mom is more worried about if, like, I remember my very first game at Colorado, I got like hit in the leg or something, I had a little bruise, nothing serious, but I had to come out for a play. And that was her first question was like, are you okay? Like, always checking about that. Then she'll start to worry about like, oh, what'd you, like, she'll ask more questions on how I think I did. And then dad is more like, he's like, oh, you did this but watch for this next time. Like, even though he, he didn't grow up playing basketball or football, he, I've been, he's been around it with me for so much, he's learned so much. So he always, he kind of watches it from how I watch it now. Wow, that's cool. How is it for him learning this game? And, and when did he, because he moved out to US at 18? Yeah. Yeah, so his former years weren't necessarily around American football. How have you seen him grow, yeah, understanding he, your craft? Yeah, he's grown a lot. I remember like when I first started playing football when I was, I started my first year was, I was in kindergarten, first year flag football. And uh, he didn't know like all the little flags and all that, but I can tell like just throughout time of me playing, I'll go into the living room and he's sitting there watching like football. Like when when I decided to come here, he was, he was probably even more invested than me, not, well, not obviously, but he would be, my mom would send me videos of him like watching Oregon facilities, watching interviews about Oregon coaches, and that's what he, li he likes to, to know. He likes to go through it like he's going through it, and I feel like that's how he connects to it. Yeah, I say that my, uh, my mom was a refugee, so she came over and never knew a thing about American football, but she was the loud one. So like in high school, I could always hear her screaming and yelling, to the point when I got to college, I just started calling her coach because I was like, you listen to like sports talk radio now right. all the time. Like you're watching the videos like your dad. Um, but it, it became a fun, fun bond. I'm curious for you now, like you were the younger brother, right? The, the, the lone brother among your siblings. And now like you're a young man, like you're entering your third year of college. Like has it shifted of like, I'm the younger brother chasing my sisters to like, hey, I'm, I'm my own man here. Um, I've got some decisions to make. I got a chance to you know, play sp this sport for a long time. Yeah, um, I think it's, it's shifted, but not in a, in a self-centered way. Like I said, we're still all super like, know each other's goals, but they, they have definitely went away from trying to like protect to kind of me stepping up and being like, the second man of the house, like being the, like not the oldest, but I feel like I've stepped into like a leadership role at home too. And just, you know, being there a lot for my little sister has helped me a lot. And she, she looks up to me a lot. That's like, we were super close and she's, she's helped me mature a lot. And so it, it just helps. How old is she now? She's 10. She's 10. What's her name? Lily. Wow. Yeah, I think it's, it's, you're, you're in a cool spot because you, you, you looked up to these gifted athletes as older sisters, you know, powerful women in sport. And now you've got a 10 year old admiring you. Like, how do you make sure that you show up for her? Maybe like your older sister showed up for you. Yeah. You know, she's, 
just started running track, kind of like of course. about <laughs> like two years ago. I think she's her second year. And, you know, I would go with her to track practices, like watch her just know it's not like this is something she has to do. Like I try to tell her, like, obviously we, we would, it would be cool if you were a track athlete, if you want to play sports. But even if that's not what you want to do, like make sure you chase what you want to do. And she says it's track. So she was doing great at it. And this, this last summer, she actually went to her first state meet already. So 10 or yeah, 10 year old in her state meet, which is it's a funny story because my mom was here while my oldest sister, Melissa, was running in the world championships. And that's, but my little sister Lily couldn't come because she had her state meet. And it was the same way 10 years ago where I was at a state meet for track and my mom couldn't go somewhere because, or my dad couldn't go to where my sisters were in a state meet or a track meet because I was at my own state meet. So it kind of came full circle 10 years later. Sure did. So let's talk about a couple years ago and your older sisters running in the Olympics, representing Columbia. You play on a big stage in college football, but that's a global yeah. stage. Yeah. What, what did you notice about her? And what was it like to watch her to run and, mm -hmm. and find success? Yeah, it was, it was amazing. It was so surreal just to see her, like see everything she went through and watch her grow up or not watch her grow up, but watch her through college and her first couple years of pro. And then just every meet just keep getting faster and faster and all the little techniques and watching her go to practice every day and just seeing her get to where she wanted to get. And just, it was just, everybody was like, just so happy. It was just like, she, she really did it. But then the thing is, she, that's not her like, it's not she got there and okay, it's, she still has more that she can't wait to get to. Yeah, I w remember watching, um, and I didn't know this connection until this week, but she's married to David Blau. Yeah. And that clip goes viral of David Blau and the Detroit Lions watching her run. Yeah. When, when you saw that, what, what did that do to you? That was, I was sitting here like I am, just a big smile, just because I've known David, they were high school sweethearts, so. They were together. I saw them like all the time and he was just, he was a big part of my life too, just watching him because he went through the recruiting process too. And, you know, I played quarterback when I was younger. So I would always be with him asking him like, how should I throw this? How should I throw that? And, you know, it was, that's just who he is. He's, he's a great person. I'm glad he's with my sister. Totally. I mean, dude, you're a punter, you're a wide out, you're a quarterback. You obviously a DB, um, but David, I, I met David at the Elite 11. So I've known him for a long time, not as long as you. He is one of the most competitive humans I've ever been around. Yeah. Right? This is a guy who's up and down in his college career and now he's playing, you know, it's his third or fourth year in the NFL. How has he, not impacted you as a, as a quarterback because you're no longer throwing the ball, but how has he and now his marriage to your, to your older sister, how has it impacted your life as you now are at a new school and are in a transition to a new program. Yeah, it's, it's helped a lot. Like, cause you were saying he's super competitive. Like him being with my sister, we would, we would go over there and like play cards. And it's just, you know, it's always just boom, boom, boom. Like getting into it, not getting into it, but just being competitive. Everybody wants to win. And, you know, he helped me like, he helped me understand that like college isn't always just like super easy it's that you're gonna go through rough times and like changes and he was he was there to talk to like I could I talked to him a lot when I was going deciding if I wanted to leave or stay and just thinking like his point of view from being now he's in the in the business side of football because it's the league is business and that's kind of how college is changing too so it's kind of like I wanted to hear from somebody that's been through it, and that helped a lot. I'll never forget, we were miles from here. The Elite 11 that year, when he was in it, was in Oregon. Mm -hmm. And we had a competition among quarterbacks where they had to be in like a squat position, 
like like this, but you're standing up, mm -hmm. hands out, and you had to hold it. Like, mm -hmm. and whoever held it the longest would win. And I think there was like 20, 22 quarterbacks at the time, and guys just dropping out, dropping out, dropping out. And he just wouldn't stop. And he finishes it staring at the other quarterback like this. And it's just like steely-eyed, and he just like, it was, it was amazing. I was like, oh, my God. Like, I don't know if he's going to be a great player or not, but this is a dude that I would want to ride with. Right. And I say that because I think that's how I would describe him. I'd say he's uncommonly unique as a competitor. Mm -hmm. If you were to describe yourself with one word, because everybody's trying to describe you, I feel like, as a corner and a prospect and all these things. H how would you do it? I would say I'm, I'm resilient. Someone that has been through some stuff and always willing to, to keep pushing, to keep going, and yeah. So break that down for me, resilience. I would say, like, I kind of really just started, like, my s sophomore year of high school. Um, I went through like a little phase of football where I was at one school and things didn't work out. So it was just kind of like it got I got so down to where I didn't even know if like football was for me, if I wanted to keep playing. And, you know, I I was like, this is what like this. I know this is what I'm going to got to do. And, you know, I just got past that and was able to just to keep climbing to get to where I am now. And then even now, it's just like, I, I can like um, go through little things and just don't let the little things in the outside world affect me. Just keep stacking days. Coming up on the It Factory. But expectations and titles, I think, get thrown on athletes all the time that maybe, maybe they want, maybe they don't. How do you, to your point, like manage that on the field, and deal with the vulnerability side of it all. So really it's just like they can put all these like, oh, he's the best corner. Oh, he's not the best corner. Uh, he needs to do this, he needs to do that. But it's like just like you can't put a lot of focus into that. Like you can hear it. Some people don't even like to hear it. Some people do. It's personal and you just got to keep going. It's a work day. It's a work day. It's a work day. Chase, first time you're ever here, what was it? How old were you? First oh my gosh. Here. Before I can remember, probably, but I remember being about four and five in this thing. Four and five. So I remember way back to like Patrick Chung days, and now he's an OG for NFL. OG, so. OG. OG, yeah. OG. Welcome back. Hey, where you always belong? You ready, baby? Eat day, right? Let's do it. Day to go eat. Let's go get it. Own the ball, babe. Own the ball. <laughs> Let's go, babe. Go eat, go eat. Come on, babe. Come on, babe. Come on, babe. Make him feel you. Make him feel you. Hey, work day. It's where you cash checks today. Today you cash checks, right? We've been making deposits. Today you cash checks. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Set your jaw. Time to go to work. Time to cash a check. Time to cash a check. Been making deposits. Time to cash a check. Hey, look, 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 Noah. Listen, a lot of perimeter game, right? That's their answer right now. Quick game, so be ready to break and retrace. Just Hands up, up front. Just yeah. Hands up, yeah. up front. We need to get batted balls, Tony. Hey, look, is the game is the game inside or is the game outside? The game's outside. Hands up, batted balls. Hands up, batted balls. T Bird, we got an entire game to play, but just so you know, I have you on my fantasy team this week. When we watch this film. Does our effort beat theirs? Does our effort beat their effort? Right? Hey, own the standard! Own the standard! What's your 1%? Find something that you did last time that you can do a little bit better right here. Growth mindset. Hey, who are we playing tonight? Oregon. Oregon. Right? That's who we're playing tonight. We're playing Oregon. I want our best. Best version of us. You hear that from your head coach, Dan Lanning, all the time. Like, just keep stacking days, pour sweat into the bucket. You know, some of those phrases. When you look around the facility, right, is it connection, toughness, growth, sacrifice? Do you feel as though that fits who you are as a connector, somebody who wants to grow tough and willing to sacrifice for the thing you love? Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, these, these core values, we call them, is something I like a lot. Because connection, that's, that was something, when I first came, it was just like, even before we installed the 
connection and all that, it was, I felt connected by just being here already. And, you know, I feel like I portray some toughness and sacrifice and growth. You know, we, we had these get real meetings all summer and the first thing we talked about was growth mindset, how you gotta, you can't uh, look at the negative of things and just like keep finding a way to get 1% better every day. I love that you said resilience. I learned this years ago from a high performance psychologist. His, his name is Dr. Michael Gervais. And he said, at the core of resilience is optimism. And like my life made sense. I'm like, oh yeah, like I've been through my things, but I've always looked at life with the glass half full mentality. H have you always been trained maybe to be an optimist when you look back on your life after describing yourself with that word resilience? Um. I feel like yes and no, because I feel when I was younger, I definitely was more like not always looking at the good side of things. Like I feel like I did, but it was always in the back of my mind, like, oh, what if this goes this way? But I think since I've been here, especially since I've been at Oregon, I've really like got to the point of just looking at the good side of everything. Like even not just Oregon, just being in college, just the 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 platform and the opportunity I have to wake up and get better every day is like it can't it doesn't get any better than this. Have you met Phil Knight? I haven't yet. What do you think you'd say to him when you get that opportunity? Probably just like I don't know. I would just be like, wow, like it's really like just crazy. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's amazing. I I ask that because when I hear the word connection, um, I think of teams. Right, and how many teams has he been around, right? And now here you are in your second team in college and within a matter of months, you're connected. So speaking of connection, um, you lost a teammate. Is it the first time you've ever lost a teammate in Spencer Webb? And how are you processing that here? Yeah, that was, that was my first time I ever lost a teammate. And that kind of is what I was leaning towards. And the last question was, Ever since that, it was kind of like, that hit me heavy, just cause it was like how quick life really is. It's like, it's different when it's somebody you're close to and young and you gotta look at just, it's not even just football at that point, it's just living your life, like how you wanna live it and enjoying the little things. Do you use, do you use football as a way to process, to deal with, emotions, loss, life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at a point, yeah, I would say, cause I feel like I gained most, I gained my confidence from football. Like, like when I first meet people, I'm not super outgoing. I'm a, pr I'm pretty reserved guy. And like when I first came here, I didn't talk much, but once we started like spring ball and like, it's kind of like, that's how I gain my confidence for off the field. Cause I have my confidence on the field, but once I like, I guess like show what I can do, it's like now I have more confidence and I, I can go like open up to people and be more vulnerable. On your social media, you use a hashtag evil twin. What is that? Yeah, it's just like, it's, uh, a, it's like a song, kind of song lyric uh, from a, the artist. And it's kind of like evil twin, I think of it like, it's like when, when you see me on like in around a facility or like in public, I'm like completely different to when I play. Like it's like this switch you gotta turn on and off. Like when like we can be friends, like I have many friends I play in the Pac twelve. Like especially when I go to Colorado this year. Like you can be my friends all year, but as soon as we hit the field it's like I don't know you like you gotta just play the game. Yeah. How do you manage the game in terms of, you know, I say it all the time, I think you're the best corner in this league. And a lot of people say that about you, uh, whether it's this league or the country, but expectations and titles I think get thrown on athletes all the time that maybe, maybe they want, maybe they don't. How do you, to your point, like manage that on the field and deal with the vulnerability side of it all? Yeah. Uh, well, I heard a quote like a couple years ago that I love now, it's like, uh, pressure is an illusion. So really it's just like, 
they can put all these like, oh, he's the best corner. Oh, he's not the best corner. Uh, he needs to do this, he needs to do that. But it's like, whatever the pressure is, is you yourself making it. So like, if I pay attention to that and like read about it all day, it's like, then I'm gonna be like, oh, I need to do this, I need to do that. But at the end of the day, it's not them playing, it's me playing. So it's like, just like you can't put a lot of focus into that. Like you can hear it. Some people don't even like to hear it. Some people do, it's personal and you just gotta keep going. Yeah. How is it with Dan Lanning, youngest coach mm -hmm. in this league, one of the youngest head coaches in the country? It's, it's great. It's right away, like he's a, Lanning's a Southern dude, so we connected kind of already just like that. And you know, it's crazy how, like, how much he knows, just being around him every day and how, how football smart he is and just learning from him, like I can pick up a lot of stuff quickly and it's, it's been really helpful, I'm excited. Yeah, I think he's a rock star, man, totally. All right, this is, I call this the final five. Last five questions before we get you out of here. Uh, best advice you've ever been given is what? I would say keep going, really. Just, it's kind of like boring and cliche, but it's like everybody goes through hard times and through, through hardships and it's just, you can either let that beat you or you can use it to help you gain an advantage on other people. Worst advice you've ever been given? Listen to outside sources, like, not everybody knows what, like, you're going through. And um, there's, there's things on the inside that people don't know. So, like, not everything is based off of, like, how other people see it. In all of your experiences in sport, what is it that you know for sure? You get what you work for. Like, you got to... Like, you gotta practice hard. You gotta make practice harder than the games. That's what we like to do here. And if you want something, you gotta work for it. The title of the show is The It Factory. We dive into the it factor and take the helmet off of the athlete. I think it's an overused phrase. It's often undefinable. But I'm curious for you, Christian, how would you define your it factor? Somebody that's always gonna keep pushing and, you know, be resilient and and tough and somebody that people can look look to uh, just because you know I've done this for a couple years now so I just feel like it's um, it's kind of just comes naturally and I just keep pushing and finish this sentence out of all the things you've seen watching your sister in the Olympics being someone a 10 year old admires and Lily, right? And being the son of a former pro athlete and being a student athlete. Finish the sentence. It all comes down to. To you. For, I would just say it comes down to you because it's like what I was saying, you work for what you want. You get what you get. I love that, man. It has been amazing to get to know you, not just the elite corner, but the elite human, man. Thanks for the time. Thank you. I love it. Christian Gonzalez, thanks a lot, man. Um, as always, you can check more of our episodes out at pack-12.com slash itfactory. From the road here in Eugene, heading back home to L.A. Enjoy.